Awesome. Lily, if we could just have, we'll keep the Holy Spirit music going just for a second, just for, just for, just for a minute. Because before we get into it, I just really felt during worship just to share something. This is, this is off script. And, and I just felt very strongly after being here with the young adults last night and, and in worship this morning, I, I just want to remind us of, of this and, and to be bold, speak this over this incredible church. Because this is an incredible church. God, oh God has done incredible things through this church. And I just believe to speak this this morning from Joshua 1, verse 6. It says, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one to lead, who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Then following some instructions, says this, This is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And coming out of the season that we've been in, it can be very easy to go into reserve mode, to go into to just hold the line mode. We can be strong and courageous holding the line. But I, I just feel this morning, it's like that's, that's done. That season's behind. And, and I feel the Lord saying it's time to advance. It's time to take ground. For those prayers in this church, because I know there is many, it's stirring the faith up again to believe and to pray into the next generation. It, generations, church, it's generations. There's something on this house to touch the generations. It's time to advance again in our prayer to get bold again, to get courageous again, to believe not just that we can withstand the pressure, but that we can advance. And I'm very much out of my comfort zone doing this. Uh, I know for many of us, we, we, we may not know each other that well, but from afar, I have great respect and admiration for this house. And I believe this is a word from God. And I'll stand on that boldly. It's time to be strong and courageous. It's time to believe. It's time to push forward. For all of us who were involved once and we've gone into reserve mode, let me just tell you and challenge you, maybe it's time to put the working gloves back on again. Maybe it's time to get the knees a bit dirty as we kneel and pray again. Maybe it's time for if you are joining us online and you can be here, come and be in the house. That's fantastic. If you can't, well, we pray you'll be blessed wherever you are. But I just believe God wants to do something. Come on. One person's excited. That's all we need. Because let me just brag for a second on the young adults. And, and we were here last night. And the young adults ministry in this church is one of the healthiest young adults ministry in our state. And I'm not saying that to pump anyone's tires. I'm not. Because if you look at how many of the young adults are in connect groups, how many of the young adults are serving, how, that's incredible. It's incredible. When you look at the youth ministry, young people actually coming together in a church. It's incredible what God is doing. I'll say it again. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Father, I thank you for this incredible church, these incredible pastors and leaders, Pastor Jeremy, Pastor Jacinta. Father, I just pray for them and the whole team and this whole family of believers that you would stir something up that fire would be rekindled. It's no longer reserve mode, but it's advanced mode. It's no longer survive mode, it's conquer mode. Father, we speak it and believe it in faith. And everyone who agrees said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Lily. You really made, this just the Holy Spirit, like we felt it. Thank you very much. It's so good to be in the house this morning. So good. And 
My name's Nathan, and as Jacinta said, I'm from Faith Christian Church, been there for a number of years now, and I think the last time I was standing here was in 2017 after the youth camp, uh, and come on, and uh, it's so good to be back. You know, you, know you, you may have done okay when they invite you back, so I'll take it. I'll take it as a win, but I'm excited to get into the Word this morning. Anyone else? Awesome. Okay. You know what? As a kid, I had one goal in life, and that was to get taller than my dad. If you know my father, some say I should have probably shot higher than that as far as goals go, uh, because he's not the tallest. He's fairly vertically challenged. And I reached my goal at grade six. (laughs) But it was a great day. It was a fantastic day, but I was so keen to be able to start doing the old like lean on the shoulder, even though I may have, it may have only been the hair was a little bit taller. From that day, I was doing the old lean on, on, on the old man. And I was so eager to get taller than my dad that we did the, we did the marks on the wall thing. Yeah. Because I wanted to keep track. I wanted to know that I was growing, that nothing bad was happening. I wasn't going the opposite way because I had a goal to achieve. And so we do the marks on the wall. How many, has anyone done the marks on the wall? Yeah, fantastic. Because you want to keep track of the growth. And let me tell you, it was a great day when I won and been winning ever since. (laughs) I love, I love my dad. He's great. But I've entitled the message this morning, Marks on the Wall, because, ready for the segue, just like growth on the outside, there is also spiritual growth that needs to take place. Just like we grow on the outside, there's also a call to grow spiritually, in our depth, in our understanding, in our intimacy with the Father. It should be evident to those around us And ongoing is a normal part of our lives that we are growing spiritually. But you know what? It's so easy to settle into the groove. Went to church on Sunday. Tick. I even read my Bible during the week. Whoa. Crazy. Tick. And it gets into a rhythm. And that's not demeaning that at all. Obviously, very important things. But it's so easy to get into a rhythm that we just grow complacent with where things are and comfortable where things are. And and that kind of defines and that's kind of where it, it stops. And we're just, yep, this is it. Happy with where we landed. But let me just tell you, as we live the Christian life, we are called for so much more than just settling at a point where we think, yep, that'll do it. So I want to ask one question this morning, and that is, are you growing? Are you growing? If you were to stand your spiritual self against the wall and put a mark on that wall 10 years ago, have you grown? Maybe five years ago, maybe a year ago, a month ago, last week? Is there evidence of growth when we put ourselves, our spiritual selves against that wall and draw the line? Is there evident growth in our lives? When we give our lives to Jesus, we're made new. Paul says in Corinthians that in that moment, the old is gone, the new has come. We are new creations, born again, infants in our new life and faith with Him. But God's will for our lives is not to stay spiritual infants. It's not to stay there. He has called us to grow in our understanding, grow in our faith, and grow in our relationship with Him. This growth isn't just something we experience passively, but it's something we're called to pursue. It's an active process. Where if I'm doing those marks and I'm waiting to grow physically, sure, that's fairly passive. I mean, you eat the wheat bix, the more wheat bix, the more you grow. That's science. We all get that. But to a large degree, it's fairly passive. I was just lucky enough not to inherit my father's genes, which allowed me to get taller. Success. But when we're talking about spiritual growth, this isn't something that happens passively. This is something that happens when we pursue it actively. Amen? 
In Peter's second letter, and I want to read this, chapter 1, verse 3, we get this picture painted pretty clear. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who has called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of this, uh, his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corrupt, uh, corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort, effort, effort to respond to God's promises Supplement your faith with generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. I love sentences in the Bible. It's great. The more, this is the key. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love that. The more productive and useful you will be. Not mincing words. We are called to grow. And then we pick it up at the end after some practical instruction in, in chapter 3, verse 17. This is how, this is how Peter signs off. You already know these things, dear friends. So be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of the wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He starts the letter with you need to grow. He ends the letter with with you need to grow. You know these things. That means they've been told it before. That means they've heard it. You may have even, you may have even heard a message exactly like this. Fantastic. Sounds like Peter did a few repeats. Sounds like he's saying the same thing over and over again. Sounds like he's saying in these things, remember, we are called to grow. We are called for growth not to stay where we are, not to get complacent in God. It's not about getting, this is, this is for Hannah, it's not about getting the golden ticket just so we can get up to heaven, get out of this place. We were in youth ministry many years ago, myself and Hannah, and she used to pay me out because I used to say that a lot. And so I'll just get random messages that say nothing but golden ticket. I was saying last night that everyone needs someone like a Hannah in your life. Just keeps you humble. Keeps you on the earth. <laughs> this is my turn to embarrass you, so that's, that's fair. But it's not about getting that golden ticket just so we can get off this planet. No, we've got a mission here. So I want to unpack three markers of spiritual growth this morning. Three areas that should be visible growth areas in our life. Are you ready? Thank you. <laughs> I preach faster when you say yes. So can I hear a yes? <laughs> Come on, someone's excited. The first marker of growth is a maturing diet. Is a maturing diet. Now, who knows that when we were infants, we can't live on the same diet as when we were babies. It wouldn't be healthy. Now, there's a lot of interesting diets, but living on baby formula is not one that I expected would be anything that anyone considers. But the internet's a dangerous place. <laughs> we're not going to touch that this morning, but let's just say most people agree it's not a good idea. We can't live on the same stuff that we lived on as infants. It's unhealthy. It would be dangerous. We would be missing out on the stuff that we actually need. Why? 
Because as we grow, our nutritional needs mature. Deep stuff, I know. This is heavy this morning. It's the same with our spiritual growth. As Peter encourages us in 1 Peter two, uh, chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into the full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. See, but we can't remain on that diet. So at the start, Peter's saying, yes, you need, to, you need that nourishment. You need that pure spiritual milk. You need that stuff. You need the foundations. That's what you need, but you cannot stay there. You cannot stay there. But a change in this diet required for development is required to walk into where God is calling us. And I love what it says in Hebrews. And it paints it very clear on the other side. Chapter 5, verse 11. There is so much more we would like to say about this. But it's difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. (laughs) If you weren't awake before. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you, again, the basic things about God's Word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. Again, I don't think we can be questioning what they mean here. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. So let us stop going over the basic teaching about Christ again and again. I'm not, I'm not paraphrasing here. Let us go on instead to become mature in our understanding. There is a call to mature in our diet. We can't go over the basics again and again and again. But we are called to go deeper. We are called to chase more, to pursue growth in our relationship with Jesus. We have to move on from the spiritual milk. We have to pursue a growth in our spiritual diet. If you were to ask yourself honestly, has your spiritual diet changed and matured? How would you answer that question? How would you answer that question? If Sunday service is our only spiritual meal, then you will, your spirit will starve. Your spirit will starve. It's not enough. If I had to live on one meal a week, I'd be horrible to be around. Horrible. See, don't misunderstand. This, this doesn't just mean doing more. This is about deepening our understanding of the things of God, which then stirs up a hunger for more of Him. See, it's not about me handing out some prescriptions today saying, well, I read 37.5 chapters a day. You should too. Everyone should. It's like, no, it's not that. You know what you should be doing, and you should be doing that. And as you do, watch. He'll stir up your hunger for more of Him. If reading the Bible is not a regular experience for you, then start with five verses. Just open it. Maybe that's it. But you'll find that as you do that, and I'm sure many people's lives are testament to this, there is a hunger that grows for more. There is a, if you start praying three minutes a day, you watch. If you do that with discipline, that three minutes just won't be enough anymore. It will grow. It's the marks on the wall. Your diet's changing. Why? Not because you're just doing more and have more checkboxes we can tick off because we're great Christians. No, it's not that at all. It's because there's a hunger for more of Him. Because as our spiritual stomach stretches, we can fit more in. Don't think about that analogy too hard. But it's the case. 
It comes through the word, prayer, worship, a deepening understanding that we need more of God and a deepening hunger to pursue Him. Church, we need to check our spiritual diet and stir out ever, uh, stir an ever-increasing hunger for the deeper things of God. The second marker of growth is an evident strengthening of our faith. As we exercise our faith, it will grow stronger. Now, I'm going to be honest. When it comes to the gym, when it comes to being fit, I'm not the model to follow. Let's just put it that way. I know I wear a Fitbit, but this was a hand-me-down that I got on the weekend. And all it's done so far is tell me how much I haven't done. (laughs) So, (laughs) off to a great start. Anyway, there's a support group after. We started a few of those last night too. But when it comes to the exercise, I, I look, I'm not, I, know the, I, know the theory, I know the theory though. If you do more, then you can eventually do more. I know this is deep this morning. Thank you, Hannah. Like, keeping me humble. <laughs> See, when we're consistently going in and exercising, then we become stronger in what we exercise. I hope you're taking notes because this is deep stuff. I know that if I go to the gym, I want to see results. I want to get stronger. I want to remove what lockdowns have done to me. There's a reason I'm in a loose shirt, don't worry. I want to improve my health so I can do more things so I, uh, that I couldn't do before. I want to live healthier and, and longer. and That's stuff I couldn't do without the exercise. And without the benefits, why bother? Because let me tell you, I don't enjoy it. Running is boring. It's boring. I'm sorry if there's runners in here. More power to you. But it's boring. Going to the gym isn't fun for me. Again, if that's you, awesome. That's not my downtime. Come on. But why would you go to the gym and lift the same weights over and over and over again and that's it? If you don't go often, it it points out how little you're growing because I might go at the start of every year and I'm lifting the same amount and it doesn't really grow. But if I'm going week in, week out, I want to see growth. So there's two lessons, I think, in this. One, consistency in exercising our faith is key for ongoing growth. And increasing what we are shooting for each time will strengthen our faith. So consistency is important. But if I'm going to the gym and lifting the same thing the same number of times every day, then that's just going to get easier and easier to the point it doesn't actually grow me anymore. So consistency is important, but we also have to stretch. We also have to push. We also have to what? Grow. And challenge ourselves. It's the same with our faith. Consistency to believe in faith for God to do things is important. But the stretch is equally as important. Does that make sense? And this is challenging. See, as we check ourselves for growth, can we say that we are consistent in our exercise? Can we say that our faith is getting bolder? Because if you've noticed your faith isn't, you may be consistent, but your faith isn't getting bolder, then we're missing half of the equation. We're missing half of the formula. We not only need to be consistent in prayer and what we're believing for, we need to get bolder. Why? Well, John 14, 12 says this, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it. So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything, anything, anything in my name and I will do it. We can ask for anything. When was the last time we asked for anything? When was the last time we decided to be bold? When was the last time to not just pray for our one prayer list, but we add something to it that stretches us that little more? I'm not just some random dude 
preaching and yelling from a stage and this needs to go in one ear. No, this is for someone today. When was the last time you pushed yourself? I'm not questioning your relationship with the Father. I'm sure it's strong. But what I am challenging is your, in is your growth. Because we all need to be growing. It may not look like we expect all the time but because His ways are higher than ours, but we need to continue to stretch, uh, stretch and strengthen our faith. When Paul prays for spiritual growth among the Ephesian church, he prays, God, would you empower them with inner strength through His Spirit, that their roots would grow down into God's love and keep them strong. See, as our roots go down into God, they break new ground. They push new barriers. And in breaking new ground, we become more steadfast in Him. And through that, our faith grows. As we ask this morning, are we growing? We need to check ourselves. When was the last time we sought God for the impossible? We can't continue to grow by just saying grace. Grace is important. Bless this food. Even though it's pizza, bless it to our bodies. It's important, but we, can, we need to be growing. At first, this may look like praying for a family member to come to know Christ. It may start by praying for an interview that you feel you should go for, but don't quite feel qualified. Or, or maybe a financial miracle, a, a breakthrough in, in health. When was the last time you allowed yourself to occupy that impossible zone? Because that's where we're asked to live. That's where we're... God's calling us to that place. We don't strengthen our faith passively. It's an active thing. And let me tell you, the enemy gets nervous when we start to stretch. When we're not just holding, but we're advancing. The final marker of growth is this. It's a deepening intimacy with the Father. The, the previous two markers, and really our entire spiritual growth, stem from this, our intimacy, in our intimacy with the Father. I was thinking about this idea of intimacy, and I, and I touched on some of this last night as well. But I just felt not to complicate it. I just felt not to complicate it. Regardless of where you are, God is always accessible and we can always go deeper. But it hinges on how we respond. It hinges on our active pursuit. See, the thing about intimacy with God, it's a childlike intimacy. Jesus talks about the greatest in the kingdom being those who, are, who would humble themselves like little children. The thing about childlike intimacy is that it's based on full surrender, unashamed dependence. See, a, a, a child knows when it's lost. I still remember, again, there might be a support group that we start after this. I still remember in the shops, you be in Coles. And of course, when you're with your mom and you're in Coles, you have to run to the toy section. You get there and bitterly disappointed because it's Coles. No disrespect. We all know it. And you're like, oh, well, you know, there's a bouncy ball. That's cool. And a plastic dinosaur. Love dinosaurs, but got a few. So then you turn around and you go try to find mum and you get back. And he's like, she's not where I left her. How dare she? So then there's a strategy at this point. You don't, you're not stressing at this point, but there's a strategy. You start to walk down the aisle, but you have to kind of do the the quick look, because you don't want her to pass an aisle at the same time. Anyone with me here? So you're doing these ones where you're trying to look down the aisle, and then you do a whole lap of the shops, and you don't see her. And okay, this is when, this is when the panic starts like, no, no, I'm six. I've got this. And so you do another lap, don't see her. Okay, it doesn't matter who you are at this point. That six-year-old me is starting to freak out. Why? Because I know that if I can't find her, I'm not getting home. And if I'm not getting home, I'm not getting food. And if I'm not getting food, then, and like, it starts to unravel in your brain. It's all right. We all know what that feels like. 
like I said, support group after this. <laughs> clearly, clearly there's some stuff we need to work through. But we all know what that feels like. Why? Because we know what it feels like to be fully dependent on someone. Fully dependent. But then as we grow up, our culture, we, we celebrate independence. We make it when we're independent. When I move out, when I... When I, when I get that job, when I, oh, now I'm in my own house and I'm independent, I've done it. We celebrate that as the rite of passage. And so we think the same thing with God. It's like, well, I came to know Him and I was fully dependent, but then I became more and more independent in my spirituality because God is busy. There's a lot of people that, that need Him. And we take on a big brother, big sister kind of response. It's like, well, mum and dad, they're, they're busy with the younger ones, so I need to look after myself. And we take that approach in our, in, our, in our daily walk with Jesus. But let me tell you, it's not about independence. It's about complete dependency on Him. And when we take that mindset of He's busy, then I, then I can't bother Him now. I have to look after myself, so I'm going to open the Word. And God, you do your thing. That's fine. You, 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 they need you over there. I'm good. I've known you for a while now. I feel like I can stand on my two feet. That is when we start to lose something. Because God doesn't call us to independence from Him. He calls us to utter dependence on Him. But it's so easy to mature so far beyond our dependence that we land in this place of independence. And there is nowhere further from the heart of God than saying we are independent in our spiritual walk. We need to fall into Him. And I shared this last night, but it, it, it comes down to the fact that God is never ending. He is infinite. And just because we learn one thing about Him doesn't mean that there's one less thing to know about Him. Which means the more we know, the more we don't know. And the more aware we are that we don't know it. As we learn about who He is, the mystery grows just as much or stays the same, I should say. And so even though we may have been Christians our entire lives, we never get to a place where there's, there's no more to learn, where there's no more to grow. It's like the, the beasts that fly around God's head in, in Ezekiel, and uh, I think, and in Revelation for sure. These things with eyes all over its wings flying around the head of God singing, holy, holy, holy. If something with that many perspectives can fly around God's head for eternity, and see something new in Him to sing about, moment in, moment out, let me tell you, our entire time on this planet isn't enough to know everything there is about God. There is always something. There is always something to see in Him. You might have heard every sermon under the sun, but if you open His Word, He can speak to us afresh. Oh, I'm getting excited this morning. Now it's the awkward part where I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> but family we need to grow in our intimacy with him we need to grow in our dependence on him the greatest in the kingdom are those who become like children and that doesn't sound like self-reliance it sounds like the complete opposite God doesn't grow distant. Colossians 2 says this, And now just as you, have, as you have accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. It's an ongoing process. Yes, we are justified by faith, but we are sanctified every day. As we come and He renews our mind day in, day out, we're going through a process as we become more and more like Christ. And I, know, I don't know about you in this place or joining us online, but I haven't made it yet. And I would dare say, although I've met some incredible people this morning, none of us have made it yet. And if we haven't made it, that means there's still growth to be had. 
So if we put our spiritual selves against that wall and we look at these areas of, of diet, we look at this area of faith, and we look at this area of intimacy, is there growth? Is there growth, evident growth in your world? Physical age has nothing to do with it. Length of knowing God has nothing to do with it. Because let me tell you, like I said before, though we may learn one thing, there's still plenty of mystery left. If the band could come up. He wants you to experience intimacy with him to the point that he sent his son to die so that we can experience life in him and a relationship with our Father. Why then would he make himself distant, busy, quiet, uninterested or preoccupied if he went to those lengths, if he went to those lengths to save us? And again, I can talk for myself this morning. There wasn't a lot to save. There wasn't a lot to save. But he went through those lengths. He's not there thinking maybe it wasn't worth it after all. The heart of intimacy is realizing just how in love God is with you. Before you knew him, while we were still lost in our sin, he loved us. Intimacy is birthed out of giving everything, sharing everything, being vulnerable with God and inviting him in. Showing him where we're struggling and letting him help us and provide for us. I still remember as a kid being in the shed trying to build goodness knows what. Probably pulling something apart, let's be honest. It wasn't so much for the putting back together bit. And I get stuck on something and I'd be there and I'd be frustrated and the dad would come out and say, do you want a hand? And I was like, no, 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 I've got this. Why? Because in that moment, I wanted to show him that I had it. I wanted to demonstrate, hey, I'm good. Watch. Because there was, there was something in me that said, he will be proud if I do this. And I was seeking that. But let me tell you, God's coming out to the shed in the exact same way saying, do you need a hand with that? No, 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 we got this. Oh, I got it. I've got it under control. Let me show you. God's like, okay. All right. I'm here. I'm watching. Show me. All right, I'll keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Then eventually we get frustrated. God, where were you? <laughs> that one hurts. Because we all know it. God, where were you? And he was there the entire time saying, do you want a hand? All you have to do is fall into me. Has every eyes closed in this place this morning? I, I wonder if this might be the first time you've ever heard anything like this. And a lot of it may not make sense yet, and that's totally fine. I'm still trying to figure it out. But I can say this. Our Father in heaven loved us so much that He sent His only Son to die so that we could know Him. And all we have to do is lay down whatever it is we're holding in our hands, our life that really compared to Him is like soiled rags. We know it. If we lay that down, He's offering us His life. And through that, we can know relationship with our Father, who's not some old grumpy guy with a stick waiting, his, waiting for us to do something wrong, but He's a loving Father that wants a relationship with you. And if that's you in this place and you're saying, yeah, I need, I need that Jesus. I know I can't do it on my own. I need Him. Then really quick, I don't want you to hesitate. Why don't you just lift up your hand right now? I'd love to pray for you. Awesome. It's awesome. Fantastic. Already a few people. Anyone else in this place? Amen. Amen. 
what we're going to do is we're going to pray a prayer. And I just want you to repeat after me. This isn't magic words. This is just me helping the first conversation you're having with God get kick-started. So I'm going to say these words and the, I want everyone in this room to repeat them with me. But if you put up your hand, I, I want you to know that this is you talking to God here. All right. You ready? Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, today... I know I need you. I know I can't do it on my own. I've tried and it won't work. But this morning, I'm inviting you into my life to take control. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again. And from this moment on, I'm following you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Can we give our family a hand who responded this morning? Awesome. Happy, happy to chat. Come and grab me after. And Pastors and leaders, we're ready to chat. But I just wonder if it, this morning if we could take a few minutes because I, I do just want to hang on that last point because I feel like we just need to fall back into that place of intimacy with Him. So I wonder if we could all stand if we're able in this place. If you're joining us online, why don't you just, whatever you're doing, just pause for a moment. Let's just take a moment to reflect. God wants to lift a burden off this morning. He wants to lift a burden off. I, I believe there are many in this place who it's, it's that fierce independence in your walk with Jesus that to some degree, you felt proud about. Well, He's calling you to come back into intimacy. He's in the shed with you. He's there next to you. He's saying, do, do you need a hand now? Do you need a hand now? And that's not a sign of defeat. It's a sign of surrender. So I wonder, as every eye is closed in this place, if that's you, why don't you just raise both hands to heaven? We're just going to worship. We're just going to pray. That you know you need to surrender that, that drive just to take everything into control and just to be fiercely independent. And I can do it on my own. It's like, no, no, no. This is a call back to surrender. We're chasing growth. We want to grow. We want to grow in our faith. We want to grow in our spiritual diet. Let me tell you, it starts here in a pure, childlike intimacy with our Father. And just in the stillness this morning, I can, He's already speaking. There's already a weight physically lifting off shoulders. Those things that we've been trying to carry because we don't want to bother God. No, give it back to Him this morning. I can feel it breaking. I can feel it breaking. I can, that, that weight for those family members that just need to come back to Him and know Him, that, that weight for, for that thing we've been believing for and breakthrough, I can feel it. I can feel it lifting in this place. Can you feel it? Holy Spirit, I pray that you will continue to work. We're giving it to you. We're giving it to you this morning. No longer I, but He that lives in me. We're surrendering it this morning. Father, I pray that for those people carrying weights that have slowed us down, that have maybe stunted some of that growth, we just pray that You would break it in Jesus' name.